Okay guys, welcome back and let's have more fun with English. Britain is great. Do you agree, Paul? Oh, two of the most important words in the English language. Britain, great. Okay. So, Paul, what do you think we're going to discuss today? Maybe um, great people from Britain? Yes, exactly. We're going to talk about celebrities, but not only celebrities, but famous people of Great Britain. Okay, and who are the greatest Britons of all time? I know that in uh, 2002 there was a huge TV project. Yes. Yeah. So they asked people to vote for the most famous person. Yeah, and I know that over a million people voted, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Did you vote? I did. Okay, who was you? But I voted for like uh, just a, a funny vote. A funny vote. Like a Chelsea player. A Chelsea player. Did he win? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> no. Maybe next time, maybe in 20 years, they're yeah, going to make a new... Years. 100 years. Well, we'll see. Okay. So, guys, and uh, to speak about the famous people, we need to put them into different categories. So, the first one that comes to our minds is, of course, kings and queens of Great Britain, because Britain is still a monarchy. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we know something about the dynasties and something about the kings. Okay, and uh, then comes famous politicians of Great Britain. Paul, who comes to your mind when you think of a politician? Um, probably the most famous, helped us win the war, Winston Churchill. Maybe him or your present Prime Minister, uh, Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, yeah. maybe, or Margaret Thatcher, first female Prime Minister. Yes, exactly. And I know that Boris Johnson, he rides a bike to work. Is it still true? He used to do that when he was the mayor of London. Yeah, maybe because, uh, maybe not now, because recently he had coronavirus. And so he's been in hospital for a long time. So I think he's still on the road of recovery. He's on his road to recovery, but maybe we'll see him on his bike riding the streets of London one day. Yes, and maybe five secret police behind him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay, then comes famous scientists of Great Britain. Uh, the lesson before the previous one, uh, we talked about Michael Faraday and some other scientists, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Were they on the list of those 100 Britons? I can't recall if they were, but I... Uh... I think I do recall Stephen Hawkins being on there. Stephen Hawkins, yeah, maybe he was there. Then comes famous heroes of Great Britain. And here we've got a surprise for you guys. The first surprise that the hero will be a woman. So really we need to change that to heroine. Maybe, we'll see. And the other surprise is that it has a connection to Ukraine, actually. And famous writers of Great Britain. Uh, I think that the most famous writer now is John K. Rowling with her Harry Potter novels. Yes, but I still don't think she's as famous as William Shakespeare. Well, no one can beat William Shakespeare. Okay, so let's go into the first category. And here come the queens. And you have to match a portrait to a person. Okay, let's see. So the first one, guys, Take a look at the right uh, part of the page and think who this person is. And, uh, well, uh, her gown is really old-fashioned, but it is not of uh, the 16th century, I think. So... No, it's more modern than that. It's more modern. So, so I think it's Queen Victoria. Yes. And that's her. So, Paul, what do you know about this personality? Well, for me, her most, uh, uh, most important um, success was the fact that she was the leader of the, still considered one of the greatest empires ever. Mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe the Victorian Empire was the biggest in population controlled. So a woman at the head of one of the biggest empires ever, that's quite successful. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, the next queen. Well, so I think that's not the modern Elizabeth. I think that's Elizabeth I. And Paul, why do they have this the first and then we can see Elizabeth II? 
Do they believe to the same families? Are they sisters? No, it's like obviously we have numerous kings or queens with the same names, so we can distinguish, but also it, it shows the dynasty they came from. Mm -hmm. And what is in common between Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth I? Uh, they're from the same dynasty. In fact, Queen Victoria was the last Tudor monarch. And here comes the only king in this list, King Henry V of Lancaster. And he's a very outstanding king and proved himself as a soldier. So, do British kings fight? Do they have to serve the army? Well, um, they all join the army or the navy or the air force. Uh, I can't remember that far back about their military, uh, their military experiences, but I do remember we had a war in the 80s, Great Britain had a war in the 80s with Argentina over the Falkland Islands, and I do remember that uh, two of the princes, or definitely one of the princes, was a helicopter pilot in that war, and apparently, they say, he saw combat. Okay, so let's continue. And here comes the last queen, and definitely it's Queen Elizabeth II. And she is still alive. She was born in 1926. What a long life. And she is the longest reigning monarch in history in the whole world. The longest reigning mo monarch. Can you believe that? Okay, guys. So now let's go to the next category and famous politicians of Great Britain. And as Paul said, that his favorite politician is Sir Winston Churchill. Why? Well, obviously, he's, uh, he was the leader of a country during wartime, and, and this country won the war with the help of its allies, so he, he can be credited to be one of the most successful prime ministers ever. And he's really, really important person, not only for the British people, but for the whole world. Okay, guys, the next task will be the reading task. You'll be reading after Paul about Sir Winston Churchill. And before the reading task, let's see the questions you will have to answer after the reading. Okay, let's look through the questions. So, how many times did Winston Churchill try to pass the entrance exam to the Royal Military College? What happened to Churchill in uh, 1900? Okay, Paul, can you read the third question, okay. please? What did Churchill do when he was first Lord of the Admiralty? Okay, and number four. When did Winston Churchill become the Prime Minister? Okay, then, when did the Second World War end? And what did Churchill warn against after the Second World War? And when did Churchill get the Nobel Prize? Okay, so guys, now please follow Paul in reading. Uh, Winston Churchill. So Winston Churchill was a famous British politician and author. He was the British Prime Minister during World War II and he led Britain to victory over Nazi Germany. Winston Churchill was born to an aristocratic family on November the 30th, 1874. At school, he was an independent and rebellious student. He didn't do well, and in April 1888, he was sent to Harrow School, a boarding school near London. His father decided to enter him into an army career. It took Winston three tries to pass the entrance exam to the Royal Military College. But when he got there, he was a good student. In 1895, Churchill's father died. In the same year, Churchill joined the British Army and served in India and Africa. In 1899, Churchill left the army and worked as a war correspondent. He recorded his experiences in the story of the Macclellan Field Force, 1898, and the River War, 1899. In 1900, Churchill became a member of parliament for the Conservative Party. In 1904, he switched to the Liberal Party. When he was the first Lord of the Admiralty, he helped modernise the British Navy. He was also enthusiastic about flying and warplanes. In the final year of World War I, he became the Minister of Munitions. In 1922, Churchill left the Liberal Party and rejoined the Conservative Party. He served as the Chancellor of the Exchequer. In 1929, the Conservative Party lost the elections and Churchill was out of the government. He spent the next few years concentrating on his writing and worked on his book, A History of the English-Speaking Peoples. In 1930s, Churchill saw the danger of Hitler's Germany. On September the 3rd, 1939, Churchill was appointed the First Lord of the Admiralty. 
On May the 10th, 1940, Churchill became the Prime Minister and the Minister of Defence. He placed intelligent and talented men in key positions. He worked closely with US President Franklin Roosevelt and Soviet Union leader Joseph Stalin. The Allies won the war in 1945. After the war, Churchill spent six years as leader of the opposition. He warned against Soviet domination in Eastern Europe. In 1951, he returned to the government and was a member of parliament until 1964. In 1953, he got the Nobel Prize for Literature. Winston Churchill died at his London home on January the 24th, 1965, at the age of 90. So, guys, let's discuss the text a little bit before we go to the questions. Okay, so, Paul, you read that he was born to an aristocratic family, right? Does it mean that his family was rich? Uh, not just rich, and uh, they were rich and quite noble. And uh, then uh, Winston Churchill joined the British Army and served in several campaigns, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, after he left the army, he worked as a war correspondent. Well, and that's probably where his career as a writer started. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it must be very difficult being a journalist in a war zone. Yeah. And the interesting fact is that he modernized the British Navy. Uh, that's very interesting. Like one person can change a lot. Yeah. Okay. So, then he left the Liberal Party again and went back to the Conservative. Yes, went back to where his heart belonged. So, like, Conservative, Liberal, Conservative. conservative. And then he became the Chancellor, right? And they lost the elections, right? So, and he spent several years writing and working on his book. So, and the book, uh, the book's name is A History of English-Speaking Peoples. Interesting thing, we usually don't use this word in plural. Well, basically, it is plural, people. Yeah, like, yeah? yeah. Maybe this is because English-speaking people in different countries. Uh, peoples here mean nations. Yes. When we talk about different nations, we can use the word peoples. For me, Winston Churchill is the outstanding person because he was one of the first people to see the danger of uh, Hitler's Germany. And he was the first to start fighting against the Nazi. The interesting fact about Winston Churchill is that though they were allies with the Soviet Union, he could see the evil coming from that state. And he warned the world against uh, Soviet domination in, in Eastern Europe. Unfortunately, nobody listened to him. And we had a huge domination in Eastern Europe of the Soviets. Okay, and uh, interesting that he fought in the parliament till his very end, I think, right? So he came back to the parliament after he resigned from the prime minister's post and uh, uh, he lived a very long life, 90 years old. Yes, that's a, that's a very long life. So guys, are you ready to answer the questions? I'll answer the first one. So how many times did Winston Churchill try to pass the entrance exam? Three times. Well, the father made him do this. Or we could say he had uh, perseverance and determination. Um, I'm not sure that it was his desire, but his father was really determined to get his rebellious kid into the military school. Okay, so what happened to Churchill in 1900? Paul, do you remember? Uh, maybe uh, he was a war correspondent. Okay, he became the member of the parliament for the Conservative Party. And you remember he switched then to Liberal yeah. and then again to Conservative. Yes. So, and the third question, what did Churchill do when he was the first Lord of... The Admiralty? Yes. I know this one, Olga, yeah. because uh, that's the Navy. And I remember Henry VIII was well known for kind of starting the Navy. And Winston Churchill was well known for modernizing the Navy. Yeah, he modernized the British Navy. Then number four, when did Winston Churchill become the prime minister? So was it in between the wars or was it just exactly before the war, the Second World War? No, I mean. it was between the wars, yeah. So it was uh, no, no. after the beginning of the Second World War, yeah. And uh, he, not, he was not only the prime minister, he was also the minister of defense. Minister of Defense. Yeah, two positions, one person. Okay, number five. When did 
the Second World War end? Oh, that's, uh, I know that one, 1945. Yes, in 1945 and in September. So, and what did Churchill warn against after the Second World War? The rise of communism. Yeah, the, uh, the Soviet domination in Eastern Europe. And a uh, uh, very interesting fact. So he got his Nobel Prize for? For literature. Yes, for literature and in 1953. Yeah. I thought that he would uh, have got it for peace, like the Nobel Prize for peace, but actually for literature. Yeah. It means that his works are really outstanding. And just an extra little bit of learning for our students. In 1953, DNA, the code for DNA, was discovered at Cambridge University. Uh -huh. Same year. Same year, DNA code, and Churchill gets his Nobel Prize for Literature. Well, interesting. Okay, let's move on. So, the famous scientists of Great Britain. And guys, do you know some of them? Okay, let's see. Now, the task is to match the biographies to the people. So let's see the names. James Watt, Stephen Hawking, uh, Charles Robert Darwin, and Sir Isaac Newton. So three people belong to physics and one belongs to biology. Okay, let's start with James Watt. Paul, can you find his biography? Yes, uh, James Watt. I don't remember him being a famous inventor, but I do remember him improving something significantly. So I would go with a steam engine. Yeah, that's right. So James Watt improved steam engine. Okay. The next one, Stephen William Hawking. Unfortunately, the scientist died not so long ago in 2018, and he's a theoretical physicist and well known for black holes and quantum gravity. He was disabled by motor neuron disease and he couldn't move, but it couldn't limit his ideas. No, a, a, an amazing person. Yeah. Okay, then comes Charles Robert Darwin. This is my favorite one of these four because I wasn't very good at physics or chemistry at school, I must confess, but I do really like biology. And um, so Charles Robert Darwin, evolution. Yeah, that's evolution theory and evolution theory and the origin of species. Okay, and the last one is Sir Isaac Newton. And Paul, do you believe in this uh, story with an apple and him sitting under the apple tree? Yes, it's quite a nice story, I think. I believe it. Okay, so that's it with the British scientists. Okay, guys, and as we promised, we're going to talk about the heroes and we're going to talk about a woman hero. So her name is Florence Nightingale and she is a very famous nurse. Paul, do you remember the times she lived? Uh, was it the 1800s? Yeah, the 1800s, and she was the nurse during the military campaign of the Crimean Wars. Well, so you will listen to the story and you have to put the sentences in order. So take a minute and look through all the sentences. Okay, guys, now you will listen to Paul. He will tell you the story and your task is to put the sentences in order. So, the story of Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale was a nurse who saved many lives in the 19th century. She was named after the city of Florence in Italy, where her parents went after they got married in 1818. Her family was rich. They had two homes in Britain as well as servants. Florence was an unusual young woman for her time because she didn't want to go to parties and get married. She wanted to be a nurse and help people. Her family didn't want her to become a nurse because hospitals back then were dirty, horrible places. They were worried about her. In 1851, Florence went to Germany and learned all about nursing. It was hard work, but she loved it. In 1854, Lots of British soldiers went to fight in the Crimea War. 
Army hospitals were filled with injured men, but there were no nurses and many men died. Florence and a team of nurses went to help. Florence worked 20 hours a day to make the army hospital a cleaner and safer place. She brought the men fresh food, she cleaned the hospital beds, and she used clean bandages on the wounded soldiers. Sooner, fewer men were dying. At night, Florence walked around the hospital. She talked to the injured soldiers and helped the men to write letters to their families. She carried a lamp and the soldiers called her the lady with the lamp. When Florence returned to England, people called her heroine because of her amazing work in the Crimean War. Queen Victoria wrote her a letter to say thank you. She continued to work hard in Britain to improve hospitals and she was given a medal called the Order of Merit. She was the first woman to receive this honour. OK, guys, take a look at the sentences once again and listen to Paul one more time. So, the story of Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale was a nurse who saved many lives in the 19th century. She was named after the city of Florence in Italy, where her parents went after they got married in 1818. Her family was rich. They had two homes in Britain as well as servants. Florence was an unusual young woman for her time because she didn't want to go to parties and get married. She wanted to be a nurse and help people. Her family didn't want her to become a nurse because hospitals back then were dirty, horrible places. They were worried about her. In 1851, Florence went to Germany and learned all about nursing. It was hard work, but she loved it. In 1854, lots of British soldiers went to fight in the Crimea War. Army hospitals were filled with injured men, but there were no nurses and many men died. Florence and a team of nurses went to help. Florence worked 20 hours a day to make the army hospital a cleaner and safer place. She brought the men fresh food, she cleaned the hospital beds, and she used clean bandages on the wounded soldiers. Sooner, fewer men were dying. At night, Florence walked around the hospital. She talked to the injured soldiers and helped the men to write letters to their families. She carried a lamp and the soldiers called her the lady with the lamp. When Florence returned to England, people called her heroine because of her amazing work in the Crimean War. Queen Victoria wrote her a letter to say thank you. She continued to work hard in Britain to improve hospitals and she was given a medal called the Order of Merit. She was the first woman to receive this honour. OK, guys. Now, are you ready with your answers? I hope that you put them into the correct order, I mean the sentences. And the first one is Florence Nightingale lived in the 19th century. She wanted to be a nurse and help people. Let's see the other answers. Let's see the whole story. And you check whether you did it right or wrong. Okay, so. The second sentence should be this one. In 1851, Florence went to Germany and learned about nursing. And number three, in the Crimean War, there were no nurses in the army hospitals and many men died. So what happens then? Florence made the army hospital a clearer and safer place so fewer men died. She started now what we know as hygiene, right? Very simple thing. Wash your hands. Very important now, today. <laughs> so, the principles are the same 200 years ago and now. Wash your hands, guys. Then comes number five. At night, Florence talked to the injured soldiers and helped the men to write letters. So, it means that she worked day and night. Very hard working. Okay. Sacrifice. Sacrificing girl. Okay, then comes number six. She carried a lamp and the soldiers called her the lady with the lamp. Maybe they even didn't know her name, but they knew that she was there to help them. Six, and then comes seven. When Florence returned to England, people called her a heroine. Well, and 
She continued to work hard in Britain to improve hospitals and she was given a medal. That's a very interesting story about a lady um, from the British Isles. But there is one guy who lived uh, on the territory of modern Ukraine. Yes, I think I know this one, Olga. I don't know his name, so you can tell me his name. But I remember years ago I went on an excursion to a Ukrainian city not far from Kiev called Venetia. And there's a, a man who's embalmed, you, like stuffed, mm -hmm. and you can see him laying in his coffin. And I remember he had something to do with the same kind of time as Florence Nightingale. Yes, they lived in the same time and actually they fought in the same war, but they were on the different sides. And uh, this person is Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov, and he is a well-known military surgeon. And that's a very interesting fact that Florence from the British side, she noticed that if to wash hands, then uh, you can treat wounds better. The same thing noticed this man, but being on the other side of this war campaign. And uh, he's also known uh, for the invention of plaster and uh, the thing they use in the operations to get us sleep. sleep. Or yeah. in the dentist when you're having some teeth operated yeah. on. Uh, such a long word beginning with A, I can never say it or remember it. Uh, Anesthesia. Anesthesia. Anesthesia, right. Okay, so very interesting connection of Miss Florence Nightingale and Nikolai Ivanovich Pirogov as people who were fighting each other, but they made a huge step forward in hygiene. Okay, guys, British people are known all over the world, but do you know these guys? Who are they? And actually, your home task is connected maybe with them. Maybe you would like to make a project about any famous British person. But if I were you, I would make something funny. Uh, I would choose maybe Winnie the Pooh or Teletubbies. Uh, I still do remember their names when I watched uh, this TV series with my kids. So uh, choose any famous British personality. Make a project the way you like and tell us about your idol or tell us about your role model. So I know that Paul has an interesting fact about Sir Winston Churchill. Uh, when you make your presentations, try to add interesting facts or something um, funny uh, to make your presentation more vivid. Paul, can you tell us this interesting fact okay, about Winston yes. Churchill? So in London, as in most big capital cities, there are lots of monuments. We have Trafalgar Square, Lord Nelson, Charles I, lots and lots of monuments. But unfortunately in the UK, and especially in London, we have lots of pigeons, millions of pigeons. And we know that pigeons like to go to the toilet everywhere, especially on monuments. So the London authorities have to always clean the monuments of all the pigeon toilets. Um, they never have to clean Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill's monument in Parliament Square near the Houses of Parliament is the only monument that never, ever, ever has pigeon toilet on it. And that's because it has an electrical current running through it, so the pigeons don't go near it, they don't land on it. And so Winston Churchill, because he's very important, has the cleanest monument in all of London. So use electric current and have your monuments uh, pigeon toilet free. Yeah. Right. Guys, we hope that you enjoyed this lesson and we hope to see you next time. And have fun. And like Florence Nightingale said, wash your hands. Bye. <laughs>